ASP.NET Web Form supports several different types of projects that you can use when creating your web applications. So in this section, I'm going to walk through some of those projects with you and explain how they work and demonstrate how you can create them using Web Developer Express 2010. Now the projects themselves can be broken down into two main categories. You can do website projects or you can do web application projects. Now a website project allows you to work directly with folders. So you can literally point Visual Studio to a folder and open it up almost like you would in Windows Explorer and any files in that folder will display in the Solution Explorer and then you can edit those. So it provides a more simplistic way to work with different files. The web application project actually builds a solution with a web project that you can work with. Now the ways the way these different projects work and compile are quite a bit different. I'll talk about that in the next section of this module. But for now we're going to focus on how do you create these types of projects and what other types of projects are available. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. You have two different ways to create projects when you're building ASP.NET Web Forms applications. And these can be created directly in Visual Web Developer 2010 Express. They're very easy to get started with, so we're going to talk through those. And then in the next section of this module, I'll also walk through the compilation model, whether you're using C Sharp or VB or even another language, and explain how that works so that you have a complete understanding of solutions and projects and how they compile and work. So in this section, what I'm going to show is how we can create these two different types of projects and show where you go to do that. So to get started, the easiest way to do this is to go to your start page and either click on new website or new project. Now that does create different types of application structures in the solution explorer over here to the right. Now if for some reason you don't see the start page, you can always come up to view and click on start page and this will take you right back to it. But that's not the only way to create these. There's actually, actually two other ways. Uh, alternatively, I can go up to File and do New Project or New Website, and I'll show you both of those, or I can go to the menu, click here, and do New Project or New Website. So there's a lot of different options to get you started here. Now, so let me create a website first and explain what the difference is between that and a just web application project, because they are quite a bit different in the structure, but not so much the files. So I'm going to click on New Website and you'll see that I have a couple options here. So on the left I can choose either Visual Basic or Visual C Sharp. And then from here I can click on an ASP.NET website and that'll give me a nice starter website that I can work with that includes login functionality, registration, and uh, even access to script libraries like jQuery. I can also come in and do an ASP.NET website with a special type of uh, syntax called Razor, and this relates to ASP.NET MVC, and there are a set of videos on that as well if you're interested and want to get into that. An ASP.NET empty website does what it says. You basically get an empty website, and you'll need to add in all the different files. Now this is nice if you want to start from scratch and you want to build up the website file by file. Now, if you've ever had to create an application that has to do maintenance type screens against database tables. So maybe you have some lookup tables or customer tables and instead of allowing people within your department or even out throughout the entire organization to actually go into the tables directly, you want to have them do that through a website, then you'll love the ASP.NET dynamic data features. Now there's two styles here. You can do something called Entity Framework or Link to SQL. And I'm not going to show that now, although we will later in this video series. But this provides a great way to build admin screens, and you can do much more than that. But that's one of the nice features I really like. The final template we have is a WCF service. And a WCF service is simply a way to build a web service that's interoperable. So I can exchange messages in a cross-platform, kind of language-neutral way uh, with other frameworks out there. Now for this particular website demonstration, I'm going to select ASP.NET website, and then you'll notice the path here by default saves into Documents, Visual Studio 2010 Websites, and it's going to call it Website 
uh, one. Now we could name that first website and that's going to save it to the file system. Now you do have some other alternatives. You can actually save it if you have uh, some other features related to HTTP going such as WebDAV. Then you can use HTTP or you can even do FTP and this makes it really easy to work with an FTP server if you'd like. So we're going to go ahead and select file system and I'll hit OK to create our website. Now you can see it creates it really quickly and you can you know right off the bat if it's a website because you'll see C drive or D drive or wherever you said to save that website that's going to show up here with our project type. Now this literally is just a folder that has these files in it and why some people like websites over web projects which I'll show you next because you can literally just open a folder and start working with files. Uh, there's no projects involved. It's all folder based. So if I close this, and I'm going to go into the location of where it saves these, which is the documents Visual Studio 2010 that I just showed you earlier. We can go back into websites and go to first website. You'll see it's just a bunch of files, nothing fancy at all. So I can go back now and we can say file open website and literally just pick a folder, any folder, as long as it has those website files uh, that you want inside of it. And we can go to those. So we'll come down and we can go to uh, Documents, Visual Studio, Websites, and click on First Website. We can open that back up and you'll see we're back to where we started. And then from here, like any project in Visual Studio, I can hit F5 or I can right click on my designer or on a specific file and select view in browser and that'll pop up the application and display it in the browser for us. Now if I have uh, a nice little thing to point out here is if I have other browsers I want to test which is certainly very common I can even do browse with. Now on this system we just have the basics installed so I just have Internet Explorer right now but let's say you want to test with Chrome and Firefox and Safari and you have all those installed I can actually right click and say browse with pick that browser and then browse to it and I can even set a different browser as the default and even change the resolution here. Makes it really easy to test things and work with different browsers. So you can see a website project is, is folder based. It's just folders and files. Very, very easy to work with. So let me go ahead and close this one. And we're going to go back to the start page. And now let's do new project. Now this is going to be quite a bit different than a website. So I'm going to click on new project you'll see right off the bat I have a lot of different templates. I can do either web forms applications or ASP.NET MVC applications. And as mentioned if you're interested in MVC there's also a video series available for that too. But we still have the dynamic data, we have our web forms at the top. I can even do some Ajax controls or build custom ASP.NET server controls. This is useful if for instance you want to build a custom grid that outputs rows and columns. Well, this will get you started building a custom ASP.NET server control that you can use to generate HTML. So we're going to come back up to the top and create the same thing I did before, but you'll notice I have a lot of different options here. Under Windows, I can create a class library. That's useful for things like business rules that I might use in my application or even data access classes. Something that I want to break out into a separate project from my web project if needed. We have all the web projects. I can come into cloud and we can work with Azure, which is Microsoft's cloud service. I can build Silverlight projects and do WCF services. So we'll come back. We'll do the ASP.NET Web Forms application. Again, it's going to save it to the documents Visual Studio 2010 projects by default. If I want to change that, simply hit browse, navigate to wherever you want to move to and simply give it a name. So let's call this first web application and we'll hit OK. And you can see it looks at this point identical to what we just saw with the website. However, it's quite a bit different behind the scenes. First off, you'll notice there's no C drive or D drive up here, although the files look identical. Now to show you the difference, if we go into Windows Explorer, let's go back up to Visual Studio 2010, Websites is where we created that first website, which was the folder and simply the files. Very basic. Projects is where this particular one is saved. And here is first web application. 
Now inside of that, we can't see the file extension, so let me go ahead and uh, change that real quick. We're going to go and say show hidden files, folders, and drives and turn off a couple things here. All right, now you can see that we have an SLN file. It's called a solution file. Now a solution is used to store one or more projects. So think of it as a container that allows you to store not only your web project, but any other projects you might have, such as a business rules project, a data access project, and others that you might create. Now the project in this case, or the solution I should say in this case, only points to one project, which is this guy. And inside of it, in addition to the files, You'll notice that we also have this thing called firstwebapplication.csproj. Now, this is a project file. You don't need to open it or work with it, but just to show you briefly what it does, let me open this in Notepad. And this links to all the files in your application. So, as opposed to a website, uh, type of project that we created earlier where there really is nothing like this. It just opens the folder and whatever you put in the folder is what opens. This is an actual project with a project file that tracks everything. Now if you're wondering which one's better, it, it really depends on your preference. My personal preference is a web application project. You, you have a lot more flexibility with the different types of projects that can be created and used but there's still people that they prefer to just open a folder and just start working with it. So that's something you'll need to choose. All right, so moving on here, let me show you another feature related to solutions that you can do with website projects and with web application projects. Let's say that we do have some business rules and I would like to integrate those into my web application, but I want to write them in a reusable way. So I don't want to put them right in this first web application because then they'd only be useful there. I want to make them in a separate project so that I can reuse that across different web applications. So I want to maximize my reuse, simplify maintenance, make it easy for team members to find, all that good stuff. Well, the way we can do that is if I come up to File, when I click on this project here, I can say Add New Project or Existing Project. Now, if I had an existing, I can link that in, but we're going to do New. I'm going to come up to Windows and we're going to do a class library. Now let's just name this Business Rules and you'll notice that it's actually going to save it in this first web application. And you could certainly change that though. We're going to hit OK. And now you'll notice that I have two things and we actually see a solution. Now you don't see the solution by default earlier because there's only one project so it, you know, they kind of take out the clutter make it easy to work with. Well now I can go ahead and drill in, write some custom business rules here and be ready to go. Now what if I want to link these two projects together? Well all I have to do, it's very simple, is if I right click on first web application and it needs let's say to reference my business rules, then I can right click, we can say add reference and I want to add a reference to a project. So I'm going to click on the projects tab select business rules and then hit OK. Now what that just did is you'll see business rules shows up in the references so whatever I write up here will now be accessible to use down in this project. Now That's all I'll go into there but that's a very common thing that you need to know about solutions and projects in, case, in cases and situations where you want to break things out. Now from here I'll leave it up to you as to which you want to choose. So we now know though that we can create website type of projects that are just file and folder based and we can do full on web application projects. So that's an example of how to create those two different project structures in Visual Web Developer Express.